Welcome to Parent Connections. This is a special edition of Education Matters. We'll be talking about student achievement, which is a big issue in New Jersey. With me, I'm pleased to say, is Dr. Tracy Severance, who is the Chief Academic Officer for the New Jersey Department of Education. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before you came to the Department of Education, just tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. Um, I started my career in education as a paraprofessional. I was an aide in a school for uh, children with special needs. Uh, from there, I became a special education teacher um, after working for about six years as a special education teacher. I completed my doctorate in educational leadership and became a vice principal. Uh, then I was a principal. I was a superintendent. And then I made the choice to go back to being the principal to being a principal because I really wanted to be closer to teaching and learning. That's, that's what I love most. That's what I know best. Um, and I was a principal for eight years prior to my opportunity to come to the New Jersey Department of Education to serve as Chief Academic Officer. Okay, uh, and that's what we're all in this for is student achievement. Uh, from my experience, uh, education, public education has been changing dramatically over the last three or four years in the area of uh, standards in, uh, and also in testing and assessment and as well as teacher evaluations. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's some uh, concern from the, both the public and also practitioners mm -hmm. about that. Why are we, is there so much push for education reform? Well, I think that um, we, we recognize that we've been working hard um, for a long time, um, and yet we need to take a look at our outcomes and say, how successful have we been mm -hmm. with all of our students? And when you look at students' ability to succeed in college and career after graduation from high school, we realize that we're really not sending our students out fully prepared to succeed, to live independently, um, to be um, in careers that, that they find fulfilling and meaningful, and to be successful in college without remediation. Or, um, and we also know that we have students who, who don't complete the college experience. So we, we took a look at what we um, aspire to teach all of our students. What is it we want them all to know and be able to do upon graduation from high school? so that they can be successful thereafter for the rest of their lives. And we did what you might call backwards planning to, to say, well, if you want all kids to know and be able to do this set of skills or to know these things upon graduation from high school, what do kids have to do in 11th grade and in 10th grade and in 9th grade, all the way down to kindergarten? How can we set kids out on a path that ensures that they are on track to graduate high school and to graduate ready for success at college and career. So we, we've aspired to take a look at our standards, which lay out a, um, the outcomes that we seek to achieve for kids at each grade level, and, and look at them in relation to what we want for kids, meaning to graduate career and college ready. And we realized that in many grade levels, they were, as what was often described, an inch deep and a mile wide, meaning there were so many things that we sought to get to. I think we can question whether we got to all of them well, whether students really mastered those skills. So the Common Core Standards was an, um, was an effort to really identify the knowledge and skills we most want kids to know and be able to do at each grade level. They are fewer, they are clearer, and they're more rigorous and designed to move kids on a steady stair step of learning progressions from kindergarten to grade 12. Now, um, Tracy, is this, you're talking from New Jersey perspective, mm -hmm. but this is a, a national movement. This is not just New Jersey, and the Common Core is not just a New Jersey uh, p uh, policy. Yeah, that's very true. Um, we know that uh, nationally, the United States Constitution assigns to the states the responsibility of education. Um, and yet, every state has um, a great interest in educating their students to be successful citizens, to, to be a part of this democracy that is the United States. And so when we look at the performance of each state, um, we see that when we take, for example, a common assessment, like the National Assessment of Educational Progress, often referred to as the NAEP, New Jersey has been a top performer in the nation. Um, and, and so across the performance of all states, we see that there was room for improvement. And so uh, uh, 
a number of states, 45 states got together, and they said, how are we really doing? And what is the evidence of our success? Can we do better? And they set out to create this common set of standards so that regardless of your zip code, regardless of your hometown or your state, that we realize the importance of preparing all students for success in a post-secondary um, environment. Mm -hmm. And um, states voluntarily decided uh, to adopt the standards um, or not. And so um, we were joined by other states to, to incorporate these common core standards into the work of our state. Um, and, and then to start to um, adopt assessments that will measure students' ability, students' proficiencies in relation to these outcomes. Uh, you were talking about uh, the Common Core standards. New Jersey already had high, pretty high standards, uh, from my understanding, nationwide. So, mm -hmm. is this a is New Jersey in better shape, uh, better able to adapt to these standards than some of the other states because we already had high standards? Yeah, I think so. I, I, New Jersey had a rigorous set of standards already. And um, evidence of that can be found by, again, looking to, at that NAEP performance. When all of the nation's students take the same test, we see that New Jersey did very well. And yet, when we looked at the performance of our students in these post-secondary settings, we saw that there was still need for improvement. So while we were doing the best, we realized we could do better. Mm -hmm. And part of being able to do better was to become more focused. So imagine the job of trying to teach students at any grade level a wide array of skills. Sometimes there began to be a tendency to cover the content. You'd hear people talk about that. I'm working to cover the content. I've got to get through the textbook. And if you view that work as a race, if you will, from the beginning of the school year to the end, then it could result in a, a superficial um, um, experience with, this, with, these, with the skills and knowledge let, set out for each grade. Um, when, we, when we focus, like they do in, in other nations where we see top performers, you, you find that they tended to try to do less, um, but to do it better. Um, you know, I've often joked that, that the Common Core's approach to teaching and learning is much like my mother used to say to me about makeup. She'd say, Tracy, less is more. Let's do a little less and let's do it better. So the kids from the earliest grades really master concepts that have to do with numeracy, that you understand what a number really is, that you understand how to read for understanding and write about what you've read. So with that level of focus, I think that it will really serve our students better. Uh, in the United States, people move all the time. Mm -hmm. Is part of the Common Core also that if someone moves from one state to the other, or within, even within the same state, mm -hmm. that and, and they're in fifth grade, the curriculum should be comparable. Well, comparable yes, right? yeah. And I think that that's really a benefit. And one of the reasons why some of the organizations that serve our militaries families, our military students, have been uh, very supportive of the Common Core because for children who move often, who are transient, we, we want for them to have an experience that is, has a degree of continuity. So that regardless of which state, um, the outcomes for that third grader are similar. Now, it's important to recognize that the standards lay out for us these outcomes for kids. Here's what we want them to know and be able to do. But in no way do they di dictate the materials or the texts or the means by which teachers teach us. So there is still a great deal of opportunity for creativity in getting to that place. So, for example, imagine just in, in me coming here today. I could have taken any number of roads to get here, but the goal was to land in the same place. So there is option to, to travel different roads, to be in a different vehicle at different speeds. I mean, think about all of the options, but the goal is to get kids to the same place. So, and New Jersey's not the only state where there's concern about con local control of their mm -hmm. education in community schools. So there still is that element of local control and community input into the educational. Yes, that's right. So New Jersey has had, has had standards since the late 1990s. Um, and so this, this isn't a departure of that. It is a, 
a um, revised set of outcomes for mathematics and English language arts that is, as I said, this clear stair step of learning progressions that leads from K to 12. It is up to districts to create curricula that is aligned to the standards, but they can select the materials, the books, they can select, they can create the lessons that make those standards come to life in the classroom. That remains um, the latitude, the choice of the particular district and the teachers who work there. Dr. Severns, I'd like to thank you for joining us and talking about standards. That's only part one. Uh, okay. There's other areas that we have to talk about, like assessment and teacher evaluations. Uh, that brings us to the end of this uh, Parent Connections, uh, dealing with student achievement, and this one focus on content standards. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me uh, on this issue.